Hi, and welcome back to Carpool Counseling. And I'm here with Ed. I think you might be able to see him down here. Yes, he's still in the front seat, but we're going to give him that uh, freedom today. So today we're talking about the second section in the Jesus is In book. And the whole beginning portion is just really understanding feelings and really knowing that um, feelings aren't as simple as typically our culture makes them out to be. Happy, sad, mad. That's typical. Um, but when we actually start talking about them and learning about why we use specific ones, uh, it's intriguing, really intriguing, as to why we um, choose certain um, phrases, certain emotions, ways we describe how we're feeling, and, and are we actually accurate in our descriptions. And so one of the things that I do in the very back of the book is I have a list of feelings, words, so that people will actually understand what is a feeling word. Um, not not just words that I feel like I should be paid more. That's not really a feeling word. That's more of a statement. And so the, the phrase for today is facts are not feelings. So the truth is that a fact is a fact. The sky is blue. That's, that's not a feeling. I don't feel the sky is blue. The sky is blue. And so sometimes we'll feel something and we'll believe that it's true. So we'll feel rejected because somebody said something or did something, but that might not necessarily be true. Now, the example that I give the most often is a little story that I tell. And I always ask people, do you have somebody at home, um, a, a favorite pet? And if not, um, do you have a favorite child? Um, and and uh, I guess that's probably bad to ask about the favorite child, but a young child. And, um, and ask for them by name. And so tell me who that is. So name that person out loud or that animal out loud, your favorite pet. And then, um, or your favorite person. And, and I want you to imagine as you're sitting here watching this um, video that you get a message that comes across the top of the screen that, um, that your house is on fire. Now we have to assume obviously that you're not home when you get this message. <laughs> So you get this little message that says your house is on fire, and you're like, oh crud. And you get up, and you gather your things, and on your way to your vehicle, you get another message that says your favorite pet friend animal is in the home. And as you get in your car and you drive down to your neighborhood, you get another message that says that the neighbor went in to get out your favorite pet friend. And as you pull up, um, your favorite pet or person comes running up to you and gives you a hug. And then the fire department um, representative comes up to you and says that your neighbor died while rescuing your pet or your friend or friend person. Now, in the context of that story, most people will have emotions that, that are all over the map. And... And some people will actually genuinely cry as I tell that story and, and have a really hard time listening to it. But in the end, I tell them, I, say, I ask them, you know, what, what, name some feeling words. Um, scared, anxious, uh, relieved, um, guilty in the end. And yet I remind them at the end, the entire thing was a lie. And they knew it because I had to ask them, what was the name of your pet? And I tell them, I'm going to tell you a story, so tell me if you have somebody at home, a pet, blah, blah, blah. So if knowing that I was telling you a story that's a lie, your emotions still went along with it. You still had very deep emotions. It tells you that your emotions cannot be dependent upon to, to dictate truth. So truth is truth, facts are facts, and your emotions can come and go based on incoming information. And so I talk about partial information. Are you, um, are you focusing on partial information, or do you have the entire story? So if I started out by saying, hey, I'm going to tell you a lie, and I'm going to make up a funny story, and it's going to be a complete lie, and then it was just kind of blasé about it, I said, well, you had a pet that died, and the neighbor died, or the pet, pet got lost in, in the fire, and the neighbor got it out, and, but the neighbor died. You, you, you go, oh, but because I took the time um, to make it an intimate story, 
you kind of lean into it a little bit more. So the way that somebody tells you something can also evoke a lot of emotion. So the challenge then is, can I ask myself, is the emotion that I'm having accurate for the situation that I'm in? Can I get my feelings in line with the facts? And so we don't want to say, I'm going to get my facts in line with my feelings. We want to get our feelings in line with the truth. So the truth will set you free. As long as you focus on the truth and you embrace the truth and you push yourself and, and grow emotionally. So I've been talking a lot with my clients lately about emotional intelligence and emotional growth and emotional maturity. And the, the best way to grow emotionally is to stretch yourself in situations where there is an emotional challenge and not give in to a primary emotion so quickly, but exercise patience and think about the scenario and think about um, how you would like to respond before actually giving in to an emotion. So hopefully this will help you a little bit. Um, really think about the way that you respond to things and that sometimes you'll feel things and it'll feel really true. I've had people say I've felt this way all my life and I'll tell them and that's a feeling and you may have had it all your life and that's true but that doesn't mean that what you're feeling is true. It may just have been a feeling you've had all your life and that's okay. Well I hope you enjoy us and I will see you soon. May God bless you.